JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for September the 23rd. I am Haralamos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US, uh, the US dollar traded higher against all but one uh, of the other major uh, currencies, gained the most versus uh, the yen and the Swiss franc, while it lost uh, only against the Canadian dollar. Now, although the strengthening of the US dollar is usually a sign of uh, risk aversion, the weakening of the yen and franc, as well as the strengthening of the loony, point otherwise. Therefore, in order to get a clear picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we will turn our gaze to the equity world. Here, Major EU and US indices were a sea of green with appetite softening somewhat uh, today in Asia. European and US uh, stocks rose on Wednesday even ahead of an important FOMC decision, perhaps following news that China's Evergrande would uh, make some interest payments today. However, as we noted yesterday, there are still uh, more bond payments more bond payments to be settled, which, if are not proceed, uh, proceeded within um, 30 days of their scheduled date, the bonds will default. Therefore, the risks related to this story are not uh, vanished yet. Now, with regards to the FOMC decision, the committee kept its policy untouched, untouched but in the statement accompanying the decision, it was noted that if progress continues broadly as expected, the committee judges that a moderation in the pace of asset purchases may soon be warranted. What's more, the new dot plot pointed to nine members in favor of rate increases uh, to start uh, next year and 17 members supporting higher rates in 2023. Remember that back in June, the respective numbers were 7 and 13. It seems that many market participants may have interpreted the statement as a hint for a November tapering, which, combined with the more hoggish view on interest rates, resulted in a dollar rally and an equities uh, pullback. However, US equities rebounded thereafter and, uh, and finished uh, their session near their pre-decision levels. At the press conference following the decision, though, Fed Chair Powell said that uh, a, gra a gradual uh, tapering process uh, that concludes around the middle of next year is likely to be appropriate, a statement implying a 20 billion US dollars taper at each meeting, but also that the process could still start in December. Although the important point here is that once tapering is finished, interest rate uh, increases are likely to take uh, center stage, and this could happen uh, uh, next year. It would be interesting to hear that uh, policy maker, uh, to, uh, excuse me, it would be interesting to hear what policymakers have to say in the aftermath of the meeting over when they believe it would be more appropriate to start uh, scaling quantitative easing purchases back. If most of them insist uh, that November uh, would be a better, uh, a better option, the US dollar is likely to continue being supported. Now, today the central bank torch will be passed to the, um, to the SNB and the Bank of England. The SNB is widely, is widely expected to keep its policy unchanged and maintain its uh, dovish stance, repeating that the Swiss franc remains highly valued and that they remain ready to intervene in the FX market when deemed necessary. Therefore, all the attention may fall on the Bank of England decision. At their latest meeting, British policymakers lowered the threshold of when they will start uh, reducing their stock of bonds. Specifically, they said that they will do so when the policy rate hits 0.50% by not reinvesting the proceeds of maturing debt. 
The previous guidance was for the bank to not start un unwinding its stock of bonds until interest rates were near 1.5%. Now our view this means that the process may start earlier, uh, earlier than previously anticipated. Now the big question is when the time would be appropriate for officials to start raising interest rates. A couple of weeks ago, Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey revealed that even at the prior gathering, policymakers were split evenly between those who felt uh, that the minimum conditions for, raise, for raising interest rates were met and those who believed that the recovery was not strong enough. This suggests that the rate hike could take, uh, could take place sooner than many may have been anticipating and the accelerating inflation last week may have allowed market participants to increase their bets on that front. So, with all that in mind and also taking into account that the bank is likely to stop buying additional bonds around the end of uh, this year, but still continue reinvesting the proceeds until interest rates hit 0.50%, it would be interesting to see whether other members will join Michael Sanders in voting for halving the purchases now, and whether we will uh, get any clearer hints of when officials intend to start raising interest rates. Recently, Sanders said that interest rates may need to start rising next year, a view which, if shared among uh, other members as well, could help, could, could help the pound uh, rebound. Now, as for the rest of today's events, besides the s and the Bank of England, we, ha we will also get the preliminary PMIs for September from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. In the Eurozone, both the manufacturing and services indices are expected to have declined somewhat to 60.3 and 58.5, from 61.4 and 59 respectively, which will take the composite index slightly down to 58.5 from 59. Despite the slowdown, this will reflect a decent pace of expansion and thus we don't expect such results to weigh on the euro. That said, deeper declines could raise questions as to whether the recovery seen after the reopening, after the reopening has reached the ceiling and perhaps push the, co the common currency lower. No forecast is available for the UK print, while in the US the manufacturing index is expected to have inched up to 61.5 from 61.1 and the services want to have ticked down to 55 from 55.1. Canada, Canada's retail sales for July are also due to be released. Uh, both uh, the headline and core sales are expected to have slid 1.2 and 1.5% month over month from 4.2 and 4.7% respectively. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, um, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.